Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Veteran Instincts on the 186th Squadron YouTube channel. Last week we had a look at a number of openings and the last game we looked at was uh, Dale Cromwell versus Ollie Pocknell. Um, and Dale made such a shambles of that opening that he begged to be allowed back on. Uh, so today we have Dale versus Ollie 2, the Can Dale Do Better edition. <laughs> Hi Dale, how are you? I'm good, thanks. You guys? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Awesome. So to start off with, you have brought the same list as last time and Ollie's mixed it up a bit. Uh, so Ollie here running a 200 point list. First order with Major Von Reg, Daredevil and Magpulse Warheads, Naked Kylo Ren and Naked Petty Officer Thanison. Um, so Dale, why don't you talk us through your list and uh, tell us uh, what you thought about the matchup. Yep, uh, so this is my uh, Old Faithful. So I've got um, Suntifel with Predator. Uh, Darth Vader with fire control and afterburners because I've got the bid in this one so I think it's better over passive uh, and then Duchess finishing it off with Predator, Fifth Brother and then I've got afterburners on this one as well uh, running at 191. And then looking at Ollie's list were you expecting him to bring the same thing as the previous week or was this a surprise? I was yeah I was um, after like you say uh, messing up the opening on the last one I wanted a rematch uh, and this was my best chance of beating him um, and uh, he then went and brought something totally different. <laughs> it's something we talk about a lot in tournament games. I suppose, I think we view this as a tournament game, right? Because there's a lot of ego at stake here. 100%. So, um, in terms of the list that Ollie's brought, it's not janky by any stretch. But there's a couple of upgrades and things in here that we don't see very often. Uh, so, how aware were you of Petty Officer Thanison and, and his ability? Yes, yeah, so um, I know his ability because Cormac's done some janky stuff with it too. Uh, but I was unaware of the range. So I know it's if you get a stress token when you're in uh, arc, but I thought it was a lot closer than zero to two. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And then obviously Magpulse Warheads, is, again, an upgrade that came out fairly recently. We don't see a lot of it, um, but situationally it can be very useful. Yeah, definitely. If you're, um, especially at the PS6 on Von Reg, um, if you get yourself in a pickle, it can totally nullify an incoming attack from someone uh, and if you are if you're past initiative and you get to shoot first you get to do that before they even get their attack so yeah it's situationally really good both those upgrades are kind of thing that you want to be kind of keeping at the front of your your mind as you're playing through the game so that you don't get caught out or forget something for sure for sure and just to clarify on Thanos because I think the day also sort of alluded to it but didn't sort of spell it out it's yeah if a ship at range zero to two in your firing arc gets a stress token uh, you may assign it a tracked beam token um, and uh, yeah i like you dale i think going into it would have been aware that it was something to do with stress and tractor beam but um but uh, yeah that is a surprisingly large uh, range of efficacy for that ability worth noting as well actually we may or may not see it in this game um, that it doesn't note that it has to be an enemy ship so you can use it to track to your own ships if you want so you could for example double barrel or double booster ship by tractoring it so Dale, you say this is sort of old faithful. It's a list you've been running for a, for a long time. And I think it's the kind of style of list you're known for that kind of impaces with a big bid. Did you go to the style of list as soon as you started playing X-Wing or is it something you kind of found that you liked after messing around with a few things? Yeah, I mean, I've it's probably as long as I can remember, even back in 1.0 really been an uh, Imperial Aces player. Um, at the end of 1.0, I moved on to sort of the quick draw Riad where it was all the mods and never dying. Um but then as soon as 2.0 started, it's, it's sort of been an orientation of these three ships or back when we could have Vader as crew on Whisper. Uh, that took Vader's slot. Uh, but pretty much it's been that kind of Imperial Ace, three of a kind kind of list. Uh, I just like the killing stuff before they get a chance to shoot back scenario as well as the moving last perfect information side of things. Yeah, and I think that the kind of standard in pace player is is very much that second thing where you get to to move last, kind of be cautious and have the ability to arc dodge or, or kind of dive in for those range three shots with nothing come back in. I think yeah. where you tend to differ from the matches I've seen you play previously, and I think the matches a lot of people have seen you play online, is that first statement of yours, they're kind of killing stuff first. And you do tend to fly these more aggressively than other people. Um, is that something, again, that sort of, sort of came naturally or is that you kind of used to be more cautious and then realised you could be more aggressive with them? Uh, I've, I think I've always been that kind of get in there, get stuck in and, and kill stuff kind of thing. Part of the, especially when this version that I took to Euros, um, it was very much aimed at that kind of when Rebel 4 ship was really all over the place. And I needed something that wouldn't 
punish me for bumping and if the low initiative stuff that if there was a lot of it um especially with like droids and stuff which is still a hard matchup but i i quite like the fact that you can still get everyone can get blocked and everyone still has mods uh which i don't think many ships in the game can say they can uh which i quite like about it so it's forgiving on both sides of it so to be able to totally mess up i guess technically bump everything and still kill the thing behind the, what you bumped uh, i think is quite a, a benefit as well albeit your target priority changes if that happens but you can ebb and flow to the situation even if it's not necessarily in your favor and i think that's actually a really interesting point it's not something we normally consider when you look at aces um, you look at aces and you always think that they have tiny margins of error and they can evaporate with a bad dice roll but I actually make a very valid point that you can bump into things, ignore an entire potential row of ships shooting at you and get modified shots into things behind it. I mean, especially, I know it's probably the least AC of these three, but Duchess especially, so many games I've pulled out of the bag 2v1 because I've engineered it that one doesn't get to shoot and I shoot the one behind using the other one as a shield all the time. I'm very familiar. I've been in that situation against you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so as we have uh, rocks coming in here, so obviously Oli has initiative and has placed uh, the rock that he brought um, kind of almost into a corner, but with a little bit of space. Uh, so looking at rocks, Oli's brought a rock and two gas clouds. Now the gas clouds obviously make sense because he has uh, an upsilon and it has limited maneuverability. So he wants to get in a position where he can still get shots and isn't going to be um, skipping his engagement phase because of being on rocks. Um, it's interesting that you've placed the guest clouds in the corners. Do you want to talk through a little bit of that thought process and why you've done that? So loads of people put loads of thought into rock placement and where everything goes and what to bring. And I've just always brought three that are at the top of my bag and always put them as far away as possible so I don't have to worry about them. Yeah. So <laughs> loads of people have lots of uh, lots of game on this and I just try and keep it all i try and corner them because whatever the obstacle is it helps i've worked out if i corner uh, my end i know where i'm coming in with the the banks and the boosts on these particular ships um but apart from that it's play as it comes really uh later on in placement i tried to push my stuff towards his end just because of restricting what the shell can do but that was probably about as far as i thought into it if i'm honest i actually quite like your idea of placing the gas down out of the way because it means ollie can't place it which yep. means that there are going to be more rocks potentially in the centre. I'm interested that Ollie's next placement was to place a gas cloud, sort of, again, towards, it was the bottom right gas cloud, is towards his side. Now, I know what he's trying to do here is he's setting them up near himself so that he can kind of go past them within the first couple of turns and have the two biggest obstacles out of the way. But I find it interesting that a gas cloud there and not a rock. I would have, in his situation, put a rock there because it means it's one more rock that can't be in the middle of the board. Yeah. I wonder, with Ollie being a more cagey player, whether he's kind of planning on setting up in this corner and then slow rolling a bit, at which point that gas cloud and its defensive ability maybe makes his approach easier, especially with Dale, as we all know, being a bit more aggressive. If you think you're going to get rushed, uh, it might be handy to, to have that uh, to gas cloud there as a sort of a screen for, for the opening engagement. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's like a space for Von Rigg and Kylo to hide behind. While yeah, absolutely. Through. And and we can see here Thanison going into that corner. Um, I think uh, maybe a theme of the episode. Um, obviously, you know, the guys who've been watching regularly will will have sort of worked out that Lloyd and I are pretty analytical players. Everything is done for a reason. Uh, I mean, we 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 lose as many games as we win, so the reasons are not always correct. But we at least try and take our time to think through things and and try and make sure our decisions are are kind of reasoned and thought out. Dale, I think we're going to get a, a, quite a lot of contrast with you in this episode because I think I've always thought of you as a much more instinctive player. And you say that you don't really think about the rocks and you don't really have a, a major plan for them. But actually, I think instinctively, you've ended up with a really nice uh, obstacle setup versus Ollie here. And the thing I really like is that kind of diagonal line of rocks across the middle of the board because once Thanison in the Upsilon gets involved in that, he's going to have a hard time going through it. Especially... If he approaches it sort of diagonally across the board, maybe not so much, and he can sort of pick pick one of those small rocks and keep two harding round it. But if Ollie makes the mistake of coming straight towards them from his board edge, then one hard turn through them fits, but the next turn, he can't then hard turn back around, if you see what I mean. He can't keep hard turning, and he's going to have at least a few turns where he can't get back into the fight and can't get shots on. Um, so obviously you have... 
your entire list moving after Kylo and uh, Thanison, and then Vader and Sumtir moving after Von Rake. So it gives you quite a lot of, or potentially a lot of control over where the engagements happen and what they look like. What are you kind of thinking in terms of ships to kill, ships to score points from, ships to avoid? Is there a process for it, a thought process for it, or is it more a case of sort of just seeing where the battle develops? I mean, uh, I mean, going off of what um, Paul said, it's um, I do tend to just do it on the fly as each turn plays out. But um, but essentially, Kylo isn't worth shooting unless I manage to get all three on him. Um, and so really, I guess it's a case of catching bomb rig out. Um, and if not, I'd rather take the shot to chip away at the Upsilon bit by bit than, uh, than try and waste a shot on Kylo would be my off the cuff impression start of. But when it's everything so far away, I usually do, I do swap it between Sinter and Duchess being the one that's on their own on the setup, but Vader's always wingmanned by one or the other. Yeah, and it's interesting that you've swapped that from the last game. So you, yep. just, you do just sometimes swap it around. Is there a reason for it? Or is it just... Yeah, it used to always be Cynthia on his own. Uh, it's right. yeah, it used to always be Cynthia on his own. Um, and, and it would always be either five straight or one hard. And I'd always used to usually go five straight. I, I found that Duchess was better as the, as the bait because she could... I could react and still dial in a one hard. And I can either one hard barrel roll, be well out of the way, or I can one forward, one hard barrel roll, and I'm actually the other side of that rock at three and three, that I can then one bank, three bank into the fight if they decide to leave her alone. So I found that Duchess was far better as the flanker, but this was more me swapping it around because I needed to try and throw Ollie because last time it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That, that makes a lot of sense. So obviously what you're saying, Duchess is the one with that kind of advanced sensors ability who's going to be able to react after you see stuff move, whereas Sintir yep. is stuck with the, with the manoeuvre you dialed in. But I also think it makes sense, and it is something that's relevant to kind of people as they practice, and certainly uh, as they get good at X-Wing and start making cuts, you are going to have occasions on which you meet the same player again in the same tournament in the later stages. Um, and there is benefit in mixing it up. Um, and certainly Lloyd and I, the gamey individuals that we are, have had round six matchups uh, versus players where we're both already through um, that we have perhaps intentionally not played quite our best in case we were to meet the player later on so yeah. that they hadn't seen all of our tricks and and I think obviously you didn't do that last week um, although it might have looked like you did <laughs> um, uh, but you didn't do that last week but you have a, a sort of a knowledge here that you played Ollie with this list before and you can't just throw the same thing at him because you'll know what's coming so I think that's a really valuable sort of lesson so yeah, as we see the kind of first moves going through here, so Oli has done exactly as we predicted. He's stalled with Thanos, uh, Thanison. He's going to do the same again next turn. So we've seen Thanison uh, do a stop here. And then Kylo's just sort of drop around the corner so that next turn Thanison can one forward, clear the stress and move basically nowhere. And then potentially stop again. So he's got Kylo and Thanison doing that kind of classic uh, Lambda shuttle stall in the corner. And it looks like Oli is trying to bring the fight down to that corner and to kind of engage you and bait you to come through those line of rocks that Thanderson doesn't want to deal with. Uh, is that sort of changing your thoughts for what you want to do for turn two? Because you've opened obviously quite quickly with both Vader and Duchess. Uh, yeah, Vader and Duchess know they've got to come in regardless, and it will really be a case of uh, I'd still probably keep the heat on with these guys to either catch Von Riddick off guard or get in to catch up on the stalling in the very corner. But it's making me decide what I do with Sintir because if I decide to just do a one hard loose to try and turn back in I could very well be caught out on my own against these two before Duchess and Vader get into the fight so the fact that Ollie hasn't sort of committed there is meaning that you you have to make a more conservative move with Sintir so that yep. so you don't end up with that TV one that you don't want yeah yep. if he'd committed I would have probably boosted here with Sintir to give me that I would it would have committed me to go round the rock above mm -hmm. them. but at the moment I'm not stressed and I can do which whatever suits best so you're trying to sort of whereas you kind of decided you probably can't turn back in here you don't want to show Ollie that yep. and you need Ollie to, to be considering it as an option so yep. that it, it kind of keeps him guessing oh. and we see again Ollie are clearly in a position there where he could have you know held Thanison really far back, but you know needs to balance it. Can't have Thanison stuck in that corner for too long because because then you'll get out of position. So 
Um, has got the kind of bank or the, or the one straight open for Thanos next turn. Has got Kylo in a position where he can come straight. Uh, he can he can bank down his board edge if Sunset has been silly enough to turn in, and he can sort of bank in at Duchess and Vader where they're going to be if Dale really disengages with Sunset. And, and Duchess and uh, Vader here, as you said, sort of going fast to try and get in. Von Reg there, banking in, and then. He took a bank and did the uh, target lock for a ship of Billy. All right, and interesting, he took the strain, uh, which is an interesting decision. And Vader coming in here with a three hard. Afterburners available here. Um, with your afterburners, you tend to sort of keep them for getting out of trouble, or are you quite aggressive never, with them as well? Never. Afterburners <laughs> is for grabbing that first round target lock or for making the most of a, of a talent roll or a, or a K10. And so your afterburners in here. So yeah. A slightly awkward position with that rock. Um, yeah, when I did the boost here, and this is, I guess, it's all t- it's, uh, half of this is also it's getting used to battle versus real life. Yeah. I was at this point and ninety nine percent sure that I'd get the lock and then do the barrel roll, spend the force to do the barrel roll. Okay, maybe just moving since it's slightly out of order there. I think going back to the um, von Brick, uh turn. So I think the lock focus. You're accepting you might take some damage into Von Reg for the ability to put damage into Duchess. And I think it's actually quite a sensible move, though Von Reg is, is on his sole I6. It's not hugely valuable or not as valuable in this game. I think if he trades Von Reg for Duchess, he's probably fairly happy with that trade. Mm-hmm. And so with Target Lock Focus, the ability to put potentially significant damage into a, a Duchess that only has a, a force point for defence... Um, is actually is an interesting trade, I think. I agree, other than the fact I'm not convinced that Von Reg has Duchess in Ark. I think, I think at the time the his gamble was to it was worth taking the strain to get Vader tease Vader in. Um, oh, okay, that's a, interesting. A total... Yeah, so Duchess unlikely to do damage, and then trying to trying to draw you into that sort of maybe sort of slight positional mistake. So I think. Um, just for getting Vader taking an action there, uh, moving Sunter, and then uh, Vader does does remember to take action, takes his lock, and, and just gets it. Here, you said you sort of were thinking about the barrel roll. We didn't see it happen, but uh, did you... Barrel roll hit, Duchess. Fine, okay. Uh, and then we can see the initial shot coming in there from Major Von Reg onto, onto Vader. Didn't have Duchess in, in arc there. Only one hit, and, and Vader getting four natural evades. And then Vader has a shot back here. Uh, onto a strained uh, Von Reg, but still at range three, so still going to have his three of eight dice, um, but a fully operational Vader with his target lock in, in place. So I think I'd be a little bit worried if I was Ollie here. And that looks like that's focus hit, and then re-rolls uh, the blank into another focus, and presume here uh, that you're going to spend both your force. Is that correct? No, I, I spent one. Because you spend the one, yeah, okay. So I wouldn't want to be down to zero force. But spend one sort of on the off chance uh, that you can get it through. And as you see, two evades and two focus there. And it's interesting, isn't it? That arc from um, Von Reg has gone from this looking like a really good engage for Ollie to actually not looking like a good engage at all. Because now Duchess hasn't taken any damage, hasn't had to roll uh, essentially tokens for defence and has now both her mods on the shot back. Yeah, and especially, I mean, it's it's hard to judge, but with the Predator there as well, um, Dutch is getting hit, crit, crit, uh, and, and Ollie being a bit lucky there with the three of eights to not, not get punished for that. And now we see the setup for going into the second turn. So, Lloyd, starting with you, from Ollie's point of view here, a lot of pressure coming in towards Von Reg with the stalling, uh, and this is sort of downside of stalling things, Petty Officer Thanison is a little bit far away from the fight. Um, so what are you kind of thinking from Ollie's point of view? And then we'll get Dale to see where he's coming from. It's an interesting one with a ship like Thanison and the Absalom because it doesn't get a huge number of shots in the game. It has obviously a better dial than a Lambda, but only has the front arc and needs to make those shots count. You might get ordinary kind of between two and five shots in the game. If you get five shots with a, an Absalom, you probably win. So I think this turn, you probably just want to bank it in and leave your options open. Um, because a two turn in this turn brings you close to the fight, gets you maybe shots on Duchess, but leaves you with a gas cloud between you and the other ships if they do almost anything, uh, and is then going to limit your shots next turn because 
shooting through a gas cloud, we know obviously you get defensive bonuses. Landing on the gas cloud is going to take away his uh, offensive mods. So I think probably a one bank from Sanderson is, is likely here. He can't really go faster because of where Kylo is, because of all his stalling. Um, so you've got a turn to almost not worry about Sanderson. But then the turns following that, you need to be very aware of where he is. So I think from Ollie's side, Thanderson is almost forced to do that. I don't know that there's much else that is of great value. I think the only other thing to think about would be the too hard. And I think the advantage of that is you're not aiming at that gas cloud um, for the sort of subsequent turns. But the disadvantage is you've kind of committed to that top half of the board, at least yeah. for the subsequent turn and maybe the turn after that. Um, we'll see Ollie going for too hard. So with the video paused here, um, just after we see that first too hard from Ollie, Lloyd, why don't you finish off saying what you're thinking with Von Reg and Kylo, and then we'll come into to Dale to talk about his options. Yeah, absolutely. Von Reg is an interesting one because of Daredevil. So the option to just sort of one turn right, see where Duchess goes to, and then barrel roll, and then Daredevil boost to get potentially good quantity shots onto uh, Duchess looks appealing. And again, at that point, you're gambling on what Vader's going to do. Now, I think a 4K from Vader is incredibly unlikely because you're playing for a very specific uh, move from Von Reg. Afterburners gives Dale the options for repositioning and taking actions regardless of the rock. So I'd be looking either at a three forward, a three bank. I think anything faster is probably going to put him closer to where the shuttle is. So I would not expect that. So. I think I'd be looking for a three bank from Vader here. Uh, a one turn right from Von Reg gives you, takes you away from that. And obviously Duchess will signal potentially where Vader wants to turn up because bringing all the arcs into the same place is always useful. So I think I would be looking at, as I say, turning Von Reg upboard, reacting to where Duchess ends up. And then Kylo is an interesting one. I think I would go as slow as possible with Kylo. Maybe even bring him around behind the gas cloud as well because he's at risk of getting isolated out in the corner of the board and taking shots from two or potentially three of Dale's ships all in one go. If they all kind of ignore Von Reg now and just sweep down into the kind of yeah, middle absolutely. bottom of the board. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. I, my only concern with, with sort of two harding Kylo back towards Ollie's board edge would be that then kind of all of your threats are coming from the same direction next turn. It then becomes very easy for Dale to, to kind of turn and face. Um, and with where we now know uh, Thanison is, he can't really, you know, uh, the, the hard turns are compromised and Dale will then have that, that gas cloud as kind of protection. Um, so it's slightly suboptimal. But I agree, the risk of sort of moving him forward at all is that everything kind of, you know, too hard right from Sinsir, three banks from the other two, and, and you start um, closing down uh, Kylo's space very quickly. Um, from Vader's point of view for Dale, I think, I, I wonder, I think the one bank fits past the rock, but then Vader ends up sat on it. So I think the template fits, but it doesn't work for Vader. Um, I wonder whether the two bank gets in clear, but but all it's almost not worth doing in that the, the three give the three speed maneuvers give you so much more um flexibility because of that afterburner so i'd almost accept taking the taking the damage from the rock to have the ability to afterburners rather than do the two bank which i think probably clears but but then you've only got your your barrel roll and you're potentially getting broadsided by fun rig. so yeah. dale kind of coming into this what were you what were you thinking well uh, just for dale jumps in sorry there is an alternative plan which i suppose is if you're confident that Vader is going to come down for Kylo is that you block um, Vader's three bank with, with Von Reg and then bring Kylo up to punish it. That's the alternative because Vader has two force I think going into this turn. So if you block him he's basically as defenseless as you can get him. Now it's only going to be one shot but a Kylo target locked or, or focused shot is is generally a pretty decent shot. Yeah and it would mean that the, the offense from uh, from Vader is is much reduced because he won't be able to sort of change his his target lock from Von Reg. That's a good thought. You could probably put Von Reg if you were if you were uh, careful enough in a position to even block the three straight and the three bank. I think the risk with that move then becomes that if Vader does do the two bank, he can probably barrel into the side of where you are and get a nice range one shot with nothing coming back. 
Um, but yeah, it's definitely an option. So, Dale, what were you thinking? So, the board state how it is, it was very much a do I decide to chance it on catching Kylo out or do I play it a bit safer and go for trying to get Von Reg? Um, so, my initial thing to catch Kylo was two hard sins here and react to where he ends up. Three bank Vader down the board and afterburners to get all my actions. Uh, and then a one straight three bank with um, Duchess, which I thought would unlikely that Von Reg would be able to get a decent enough shot to delete her in. Um, but I was a bit worried that if I committed down that road, I'd just end up taking too much from a, from the broadside from Von Reg, really, or have my attack like deleted with a with a mag pulse. So in the end, going over the um, over the rock with the three of of some direction seemed preferable to chance in the one bank or the two bank because if I get it wrong, I've got nothing. And then from Cynthia's point of view, if you decide not to with Vader, kind of go for the go for the three bank hard forward Kylo. Do you still see hard Cynthia in, or is there a sort of second? You know, this was an um and an R. It was um, it was either t- turn in and react, or carry on carry on towards the other guys and bank in all together. And if I did do that and Kylo decided to come after me, I could try and leverage getting the rock on the other side um, to give me a little bit of extra defense dice. And maybe make that target priority, tease him towards Vader than Sintir if I have the choice. I think the point I was most impressed by was the to have the awareness there that the risk of the three bank and committing to Kylo is that Von Reg could get the mag pulses off on Vader, strip all you know, strip his target lock and and really leave Kylo probably not taking much damage. The kind of awareness to kind of have that in your mind already as a, as a possibility, I think, is quite impressive. And certainly is something that I wouldn't have been thinking about. And I'd have probably been sat there thinking, ha, 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 I'm about to b- delete Kylo, only to see my target lock disappear and, and get very sad. Cool. Yeah. We'll let the, uh, the tape roll on here and we'll see uh, how this turn does play out. So Duchess, using the ability there? Slowing it down, but I uh, wanted to get close enough, but not to any, have anything jump out of arc. <laughs> So maybe kind of trying to keep that that arc wide should should Ollie decide to do the one hard and kind of keep your options open for next turn, really? Not, not with, with Duchess, you can... I mean, she's one of the best outmanoeuvrers in the game. And staying slow means you can still come out wide but still come back in for the shot. And that does cover your kind of one hard, one hard plan nicely, Lloyd. Yeah. Again, sort of ship's abilities and just an awareness of how everything works there quite easy seeing a, a striker to think that they will have to move quickly and they kind of obviously have to important to remember that duchess doesn't have to earlier on and can slow herself down if she wants to um von Reg kind of going really quick there so yeah, five was, five straight forward yeah, i wasn't expecting von Reg coming all in where he's sat at the moment yeah, that is as lloyd described that's the kind of perfect place for that that block on the three bank um has nicely arc dodged duchess already so the first two thirds of that are, are looking looking pretty good um and then just a sort of i suppose a question about actions here looks in a decent position i think um this bit did confuse me slightly because having knowing that vader hasn't moved yet apart from wanting to not get shot mm -hmm. he's not to do the boost he's not getting he's odds odds on not getting any shots this turn and then you go for the the three straight with vader yeah Um, and actually we were we were talking about kind of keeping the options open for the afterburners boost, but that's gone a little bit further than you wanted it to by looks of things, and that boost to the right is not on. Um, yeah. So going over a rock intentionally and, and putting yourself in a position where you were committed essentially to doing that this turn is one of those interesting points, isn't it? Because it looks like a bad decision, but I think looking through it all, the decision to get a, a basically fully modded shot into a strained von reg with Duchess following up. And the fact that Vader can afterburn us afterwards and then take actions anyway, it's kind of it goes against everything you learn when you, you start playing X Wing, but it actually makes a lot of sense to have that ability to still basically do everything you want afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that could have easily I know you got away with it, but that could have easily half on rig that turn just as much. Or yeah, just absolutely. As long as- um whilst whilst that chat was going on, um <laughs> Yeah, so, something crazy. So we've got so, something, <laughs> something crazy just happened. Absolutely. So Von Reg with that boost, uh, which we can go back to and talk about in a moment. But the thing he did do was uh, unfortunately get himself completely broadsided by Suntir, who had gone ahead and dialed in that more conservative three straight forwards. 
So Suntir left in arc of Von Reg, Von Reg with no tokens because he just boosted. And Dale deciding to choose an evade, which is probably sensible because uh, it was sort of a just four dice versus four dice exchange of fire at that point. Uh, Von Reg rolled two hits uh, and Dale blanked out. So took spent the evade and took one. Uh, and then an unmodded Suntir rolled three hits and a crit to one shot Von Reg. Um, so sort of pretty fortuitous there, really. I think I think Dale, a move you were you were dialing in not to go and kill Von Reg, but to keep Suntir safe. Yep. Uh, yep. And then from a pretty even trade of fire, taking one, I think was was not unreasonable. You know, four dice into three, you've got the auto evade. Uh, but then obviously putting four damage in uh, against three three evade dice is, is yep. incredibly lucky. And then we've had a sort of exchange of fire between. Uh, Duchess uh, and Vader, which hasn't done anything, although Vader did take uh, a shield going over that rock, um, and then a poor quality shot through a gas cloud um, from Petty Officer Thanison, which also did no damage. So, good moment to sort of take stock for Ollie, I suppose. It is obviously incredibly unlucky to die, but it'd be interesting to know why he boosted. Looking at the board position, um, I think maybe what he was worried about was the two bank from Vader. And he was kind of sat blocking that three bank. But I think the risk was if you had two banked, that he'd have been broadsided by it. Um, in hindsight, and what he could have done was he could have barrel rolled and he could have even barrel rolled as by, by taking the strain or the depletes. Um, still got into a position to block Vader if he had uh, two banked. And the benefit obviously would have been that he'd have been sat at more range from Suntir and with a token. Um, and it sounds a little bit like I'm sort of, you know, making those plans knowing where Sintir went. But I don't think there was much downside to doing that, I think is what I'd say. I think you'd have been in a position where the one hard would probably still have fit um, next turn. The one hard downboard had Sintir yep. too harded. Um, and if Sintir goes straight, then you're definitely in a better spot. So I think, you know, small things. But in hindsight, uh, Ollie probably better off with the, with the barrel roll and, and focus there. Just in case Suntir went yeah, straight. Yeah. And if I do anything apart from the two straight, I I have to do a lot of work to get any shot on yeah. it. So, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, it felt like two things. It felt like, firstly, Oli called your Suntir dial incorrectly. Yeah. Um, which I think, again, is, is a thing of having played against somebody frequently or recently. Um, doing something different can catch people out. But also, it looked to me like he had decided he was going to try and block Vader. And then having put himself in a position to do that, then got nervous. Yeah. yeah, and rather than just trusting his initial instincts, he sort of reassessed, but reassessed, I think, incorrectly. I hated the boost when he did it, and obviously, unfortunately, too much was going on, so I didn't get a chance to say it. <laughs> um, but I hated the boost because it, it gains him very, very little. And the upside of getting that block on Vader is huge. Yeah, and I think... I think it's that thing. Like Ollie's, you know, I think, played for the block, um maybe looked at it and and it does happen that you, you you do the move and you end up in not quite where you expected or you do the move and then you suddenly think oh eek what if you know i hadn't considered the two bank and now we look at it it's perfect but i think at that point um maybe he could have taken a second longer to reassess his options and come up with a better solution to the problem that he'd now seen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So game rolling on here. Um, Ollie kind of turning Thanison in, clipping that gas clay. No, not a, not a disaster. You know, the lack of offensive mods is not fantastic. But trying to turn the arc round and get him involved. Gets a nice block on Vader. Uh, so Vader now sat range one of a an unmodded but five dice Thanison. Meanwhile, Duchess, with Duchess's maneuverability, has been able to arc dodge and, and get herself a nice... Uh, double modded uh, range one shot and Suntir coming in here um, takes the evades already down to two health um, so so that you know that makes sense you're obviously worried about Suntir dying to a combination of Kylo and, and Thanison here um, and then at this point it looks to me like you're at, at range two of both of them um, you've got you've got your bullseye on Kylo so you're going to get your focus um, and you're you're kind of umming and ahhing about uh about repositioning Doing moves that. here and, and as we can see uh you go for it and boost in what what was the thought process there so this was knowing that i had a bumped vader and trying to make him choose who thanison ends up shooting at mm -hmm. um and i thought if i can get center in close i can trade some good damage on kylo and force thanison to pass up the shot on vader um was what made me choose to go for the boost but as you can see by him checking the arc, um, this then 
gave me a stress token that uh, made what's happening happen now. <laughs> and so Which, this was either not being aware of Thanison's range or forgetting yeah. your ability. Yeah, this is what they call red mist. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, he, he, uh, luckily I still have bullseye on something else, which got me yeah. the which got me the focus. But yeah, it gave me a tractor. And so now, Sunter in uh, ha- having real problems here, he's sort of two agility, two health, and and sat taking nine dice uh, this turn. Um, yeah. But I suppose the the plus side is well, I mean, he, he could, may well get killed by Kylo here, and then Vader still takes the five dice. So we'll see what happens. Um, so the range one shot coming in, uh, he decides to go on Thanison here, presumably. Because you don't really want to spend the tokens and, and therefore think Kylo's not going to take much damage? Yeah, I, one shot on Kylo's worthless, so it's trying to try and put as much damage in Thanison before I die. And Sintir continuing to be just yeah. incredible uh, with another triple hit crit, uh, natural no mods. Um, Thanison at least rolling evade, uh, uh, but takes three shields there. Um, no shot from Vader, and now we've got Kylo back into Sintir. So this is going to be four dice into two. Um, with the focus and evade, actually not likely to die here. Um, Track, tractor beam, though, as well. Which... Yeah. Kylo, Kylo rolling three focus, uh, which is one too many for Kylo. And um, since you're rolling the evade, spending the evade and going down to one health there. Dutch is coming here, two hits, uh, putting another two damage into Thanison. Um, and then we've just got Thanison left. Uh, who is now shooting five dice into a two agility and focus token yep. Sinter, um with three hits, and that's Sinter dead. And so as that happens, I think one of the criticisms I've seen of the channel is that we pick a lot of very meta lists and everything is the kind of stuff you'd expect to see at a tournament. And here we have uh, Petty Officer Thanison, who's something I think I've only ever seen on the table once or twice in second edition. But it's catching people out, right? It's, it's catching daylight out here, where at the start of the game, obviously you knew what the, the ability was when we spoke about it, and at the start of this recording, you knew. But in the middle of the game, it's very easy for that information to just kind of be forgotten at a key moment, right? And that key moment has essentially cost you all of Sinter. There is value in stuff that is a, a bit off meta. You can quite often do potentially better with a ship than you should do, because it's not the kind of thing you see very often, and people aren't used to it, and people don't know how to play against it yeah it's like blue ace effect isn't it? Yeah. yes absolutely. Uh, yeah the surprise factor is huge and actually in terms of game state we'd gone from an opening where ollie got von reg in trouble dale up at the game but now one turn later uh, and and dale's lost center and it's looking very even again um kylo is more than capable of taking on duchess and or vader uh, and so all Wally really needs Thanison to do with the seven remaining health is to take out one of the other ships, and then this is going to be a, going to be a tight game. I think again, sort of on the flip side, in Dale's favour is that Sintir didn't go quietly into the night. You know that that big hit, those three shields he took off Thanison that turn may turn out to be very important. Um, and many's the game I've played where you're kind of like, oh, if that if that one attack had just done a bit more, you know, I'd be okay. Yeah. Twelve health is an absurd amount of health to have to shoot through, but you're not going to do it in one shot, right? So you have to take multiple shots into a ship like that if you want to get off the table. So positionally, Ollie not got many options. Um, Thanison obviously not very manoeuvrable, doesn't have a have a K turn, um, and Kylo stressed. So I wonder if Ollie considered the stop there, but you can see he's gone for the bank, presumably sort of wanting to to keep the dial open or maybe swing Thanison out and back in. I don't, I can't see a move that that's playing for. Um, and you'll have to tell us, Dale, was that a misjudgment with Kylo Bioli or was that intentional bump? Yeah, he, he did seem to think it would fit. Okay, so kind of getting himself in a bit of a bit of a mess there with, with sort of Thanos and getting in the way of Kylo and allowing Duchess just the easy one hard. Obviously, he had a number of options with the Aderons, but one hard in and, and kind of has choice of, choice of targets now. Um, and then I, felt, I thought this was interesting. So you K-turn Vader. Um, Vader at this point doesn't have a target lock on anyone and is stressed. So even if you afterburners, you're not going to be able to link that into any actions. And you go ahead here in a moment and you you afterburners uh, towards Kylo and Thanison. I 
definitely wouldn't have done that. I'd have, I'd have waited. I'd have thought Vader's, you know, he's in a nice position for next turn. He's got his arc nice and open. Um, I'll keep that that afterburners for another time. Why are you about to afterburners? Probably because I thought I'd get a cheap shot on Kylo because he's bumped. Yeah, I suppose it is as less defensible Kylo as possible. Right, he's down to yeah. a single force. Um, he's going to be a range one, so you're back up to three dice again. Depending again on how that shot goes, you can follow up with Duchess as well. And it's like you said at the start of the game, Kylo is very hard to kill with a single shot. You only have two ships in, in the game, so any opportunity you can to get cheap damage into Kylo is worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, especially with Kylo because of the the, the high agility and high force that he is. That those moments where he does bump or he does K turn, they are the only moments that you have that because odds on, he's yeah, he can take two and not even care. But as we can see, it's not really worked out. Vader just rolling the one hit, which Kylo uh, sort of naturally evades. Uh, and then I like this when you, you you've got the choice here. You've got the range two shot uh, single modded into Kylo, or you've got the range two with your Predator uh, into Thanison. And I think this is something I'd really advise to anybody watching: is you've always got to be reassessing your decisions, right? So we can hear from Dale that the, the plan with the afterburners is that he focus fires Kylo and gets some damage into him when he's got the two shots on him and, and Kylo sent one force. That hasn't worked. You know, the first half of that plan hasn't worked. And so now, you know, where he could have chased it, could have taken that that single modded shot into single modded defense, maybe done one damage, he's actually reassessed um, and put hit, hit, crit into, uh, into Thanos instead um, and actually got him down to four health with a hull breach. Um, and I really like that. I think that you, you've got to, in X-Wing, you're always going to be thinking on your feet and you can't kind of decide upon a course of action and start the turn and just continue down that road no matter what's happening. You're going to need to be aware of what's changed. It's a really good assessment of the game state hasn't changed to the point you want it to. And so that plan, as good as it was, I actually really liked it, is no longer as good as take the cheap damage into Thanos and score the points, get him closer to being off the table. Because once you only have one arc to worry about, then it's, a, again, a very different game. Okay, so Ollie in trouble here. He's got Kylo full, so still still a chance, still very much in the game, uh, and Kylo now back up to two fours. Um, but Thanison looks like he's going to be out of the fight here, um, and and on four health with a hull breach, you've got to worry if he uh, if he gets any more shots in this game. So let's pause the video again here because these guys are flying with the dials. And so let's start with Dale, uh, and why don't you talk us through your kind of thoughts about how the game's going at this point? As much as I... Dutch is probably one of my favourite ships. I do worry when it gets to this part of the game that you end up being too clever about it and end up uh, trying to pursue something a little bit too clever with her and run out of options. Um, I worry with Vader, because his one straight isn't blue, um, I worry that he'll go too fast and will be... Because if he, if he bumps like two, three turns in a row his damage output go through the floor. Um, you need him to have, because at this point I've, I've gone through, even though it's gone in my favour this part, I've gone through this middle bit of the game without a lock on Vader. Um, which, while he's got a lock and fire control, I'm happy. But this kind of middle bit where he's grasping at straws to try and pick who he's going for again, um, I always worry about picking that wrong and not getting the chance to reacquire it. And even though he is PS6, there are there are things that are more manoeuvrable than him, especially when he's stressed. And then specifically from kind of this turn point of view, so because of that, um, what are you what are you thinking with the position you're in here? So I'm I'm expecting either a hard stop here to mess up my turn and help his Kylo, or I'm expecting him getting out of dodge to try and get back into the fight with Stanison. Um, so this is an um and an arm with Vader. I need I need to put in a blue, but I need to get shots on target. Duchess is pretty definitely doing a one straight, uh, and then she'll just react it with Errolons. Um, it's a pretty safe bet for her, and I'm going to be able to shoot something. It's just a question of what I can line up the um, bullseye with, really. Okay. And then Lloyd, um, as our surrogate Ollie uh, for this for this episode. Tricky position again, still for Thanison. Um, Kylo's got a few more options, and sort of where would you go from here if you were on? So I was kind of working through options with this. So obviously, the last thing I think probably you want to do with Thanison is disengage with him because 
uh, turning right off the board just means he never ever gets another shot and probably dies in one or two turns. So kind of working through options. So the hard stop is an option. Um, I didn't hate it because it makes it slightly harder for Vader to get a shot on him. And if, if they all misjudges it and Vader overshoots, you might get a free shot into the back or side of Vader. But the one forward from Duchess is so easy and so like so clearly the sensible and easy thing to do that you are taking a lot of damage to the extent that you might even die this turn from that shot. There's a slim chance of a, a meaningful shot into Vader. So I think actually the, the trade for that isn't great. Uh, and it limits what you can do with Kylo. It leaves Kylo basically with three options. He talon rolls left or he talon rolls right or he three turns right and tries to come around again. And I don't actually really love any of those plans. So I think you actually have to get Thanos out of the fight or bring him down and to the left and circle him back around that way. And the reason for going that way is it means that he has a bit of a slim chance, but a chance of getting in behind Vader and getting shots into Vader. Uh, because certainly for the next few turns, Vader isn't going to be facing the other way. He's not going to be K-turning this turn. Uh, and it's relatively unlikely he's going to be K-turning next turn. So I think bringing Thanos down to the left is the way to go. Now, in terms of actions from here, again, Ollie's in, in a bit of a hole. And so he's got a series of mediocre choices rather than a, a series of great choices available to him. So I think looking at just reinforcing the back and, and slowing that, that bleed just to give Kylo a bit more time is an option. Um, I also like the idea of two turning down and then jamming Vader. Now, obviously, Vader can still choose which of those actions he takes first, whether it's the focus or the lock, and presumably it would be the focus, so that he still gets full mods, but it does limit him somewhat. So that's, I think, plan A. And then it's what you do with Kylo after that. So again, obviously moving first uh, is a problem with Duchess being able to react to you. So a talent roll around Duchess means the Duchess can just aileron towards you and bump into you and you have no shot and Vader gets modded shots into you. So I think as much as it's far from ideal, Kylo's only real option this turn is to disengage, take a lock on presumably Vader and come around later for a, a better shot. Yeah, I think it's tricky. Um, I think from Thanison's point of view here, Clay, I think you've got two options. I think that for Thanison to get another shot this game requires your opponent to make a mistake. And that can happen in one of two ways. So either you stop here uh, and Dale thinks you're turning right and three straights forward and, and ends up with Vader sat in front of Thanison. Um, and so that would be a way, you know, and it would be a way of getting getting that final shot out of Thanison um, and, and relying on Dale making a mistake. So I don't, I don't think that's a definitely bad move. I think the side benefit of that is it means that if Vader doesn't do that and doesn't overshoot, then he likely bumps. And, it, and as, as Dale has said, it reduces his offense for this round um, should he get a shot on Kylo. Um, I think the downside, as you said, is that you might just die, you know, with Duchess having that one straight with the hull breach and four dice, mod, double modded, she could easily PS kill you. So even if even if Dale does overshoot and fly uh, Vader in front of Thanos, and, um, it may be for naught and you may die before Vader ever gets shot. And so I think I agree with you that the two hard left is the best move. Um, I don't think that that gets you a shot. I think that, you know, it's going to be three or four turns until you get back range, but it gives your opponent the opportunity to make a mistake. You know, it gives Dale the opportunity to try and go for Kylo um, and and ignore Thanos and, and, get, and get that one more shot in the game. And even if Dale does see the right thing, it at least drags him towards the bottom board edge and gives Kylo space to kind of get himself out and sort himself out. So I think I also like the two hard left, um, but not really with thoughts of getting shots with Thanison, uh, more in dragging uh, Dale's list sort of into an area that Kylo can then pounce on them. And there then, is and then from an additional plan, sorry, of what you can do with Thanison is, of course, that he can coordinate. So you can play around with Kylo's positioning if you want to... Um, talent roll or k turn him or if you want to give him a lock before he does either of those things yeah and i think having spent a long time here with the game boards thinking about it a luxury that the players don't have but i think that that probably sounds like the best solution you put pressure on duchess you make dale make a difficult choice that if he wants to go and kill thanos in this turn he's gonna have to you know take some damage as a result um, and then the only problem with that is that Vader probably gets a modded shot onto Kylo, but I think that's a trade-off you've got to you've got to make, and you've got to just trust that your dice will will bail you out for this turn, uh, and then hopefully you can deal with Duchess by the time that Vader gets background. Cool. So 
let's start it going again there and see uh, what the guys chose to do. And it's worth pointing out, we said at the start, that with a shutter you're trying to get you know, between two and five shots. So far, Thanderson has fired once, right? To kill Cynthia, yep. Yeah. I think, yeah, he shot twice. The first shot, sort of... Oh, yeah, right at the beginning. Range, uh, range three, three through the cloud. Maybe yeah. maybe doesn't count, but but got two shots. I think five is uh, is ambitious. Uh, I'd be upset with myself if my opponent's Upsilon shot five times in the game. But, um, <laughs> well, yeah, I th- no, I th- for sure. If you shoot five times in Upsilon, you should almost definitely win. <laughs> um, and we can see here, so we've got the the stop, sort of almost almost what we described, but the, the stop uh, and then the the um, Tenerife Kylo. And I suppose the additional benefit of the stop that we didn't really take into account is it does cut down Duchess's options here. Um, and so Dale got the one straight dialed in here on Duchess. Um, yeah, this was a gamble of if I do the one straight, I'm probably definitely because of hole breach going to kill uh, Thanison. But I am going to die to Kylo. So this was now a massive deliberation of do I Erolon to uh, bump uh, one of the ships to still give me the shot? And this is where, I, I, even in real life and in Vassal, you're trying to gamble where it lands. And I was so sure at this moment that the Erolons and then the one straight would bump Kylo and let me shoot Thanos in range one. And as you can see, it does not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I think that's, that's one of those moves where you want it to fit so bad that you talk yourself into it, right? I've been there as well. Yeah. That's beautiful judgment, though. He really posted Duchess through that narrowest of gaps. Exactly. Um, <laughs> in staying alive, taking 50-50 on one damage um, is actually well better odds than taking four dice from Kylo. Yeah. Um, but, but obviously yeah, you don't get the shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Thanison doesn't by this turn, and you do, and you do take a damage on Duchess. But as you say, it's it's not it's not the it's not the worst outcome. You know, you've taken one damage. You've still got three hull left. You're not taking any incoming fire this turn. You know, un- unfortunately, you're going to be running over that rock again next turn. Yeah. Um, but actually, it looks it looks like Vader with the bump there may even not be in the arc of Kylo. So yeah. although maybe not what you planned, uh, not a, not a terrible outcome. Um, it does put Duchess in a slightly odd position for next turn, and all of a sudden, uh, Thanison's ability to get a shot uh, looks like it may have increased. Um, but we'll see about next turn. And so um, the only shot coming in here this turn is two dice Vader into Kylo at range two, you know, both with force. Uh, Vader gets the hit focus uh, and, and converts to two hits, but, but Kylo with a natural two evades there. Um, and so... One turn further into the game, uh, and and no damage, no further damage done. And a kind of strange one, really. Um, the the Duchess moves obviously a little bit unexpected. You know, no one expected her to be in this position. Um, but it makes sense your your explanation. You know, you're you're hoping for the bump on Kylo, uh, get your shot into Thanos in any way, and it's all going to be okay. Um, Duchess now running over this rock again next turn, but has all of her kind of options in terms of maneuverability. Um, this is, a, this is an odd one because I've got to try and call Thanison's move and I have to Erolon because Duchess's action step is uh, dependent on her actual move. So yeah. if I choose not to Erolon, I lose my action as well. Mm-hmm. So I've got to try and get this, almost work out my manoeuvre before including the Erolon on this turn. Otherwise, I'm totally unmodded. This is how and... unhappy an ace player is having to pick all of their moves beforehand <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Thanison here so now stressed um, I think at this point I think you have to to two hard right I think that the two hard left and we see that coming in here the two hard left would have left Duchess you know with an easy easy route into the, the rear of Thanison and you definitely don't get anything at least this way you, you jam Duchess up um, and the two hard opens up the space for Kylo to fly into, and I'm expecting another two hard here from Kylo. Um, to clear the stress, and I'll probably at that point, take the lock on Duchess. I think the boost from here doesn't really add anything, um, unless Vader takes a, a very prescient and, and, and risky K turn or a, or a talent roll, which I think may not get a shot. Uh, then you, then Kylo is safe for Vader for this turn. Um, I think you just use this as a, as a turn to, to grab the target lock. And in fact, that's what Ollie does. 
taking the target look on on Vader, which may may turn out to be important later. Uh, and now down to to Dale's decision with Duchess uh, and and with the um, with the earlier ones. So can you remember what you've got dialed in, Dale? So this is one hard dialed in. I'm pretty sure. And knowing that I've got to take that error on, to, uh, or I bump on the rock, and then this is me going, this is terrible. <laughs> Why, at that point, why not decide to just one turn stay on the rock and not be in front of Thanos? Um, I think I was just more concerned with, again, getting red mist about getting an action and still hoping sure. that that one hard is going to just clip it and get the ki- PS kill it. Because, again, it doesn't matter if you're in front of some big, scary five-dice gun if it's going to die. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, again, this is one of those I can't act where we'll find out in a minute. I can't remember if that just catches or not but it's um knowing that i could shoot rather than definitely bumping i've got the chance mm. of, of of killing it cool and that uh, i don't know that i think that's the right decision but i can understand what you made it so i think that going over the rock just with the one hard and you did take another damage off that rock uh could have been yep. a crit but only only a normal hit but um with Kylo the way he was, you weren't going to take any of the shots and you were going to be alive next turn. I can see the sort of the temptation of trying to get the shot. Um, and uh, whether you're in Ark or not, I don't think we ever find out because uh, what is currently happening is that Vader um, has put two hits into Petty Officer Thanison. Uh, the first is a fuel leak uh, because of Hullbreach. And the second is a direct hit. So of his four health, the first went to a fuel leak the second and third went to a direct hit, and the fourth uh, went to the bonus damage from the fuel leak from the crit. Uh, and Thanison dies yep. with Vader doing the completely average four damage from a two die single one shot. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, and so who knows where the Duchess was going to be in arc? It looked to me <laughs> like not, um, but we will never find out. Uh, and Ollie now. Oof. Still, yeah, an still, mountain to climb, but. but still in the game. Yeah. Duchess is on two health. They're going to shoot at the same time, uh, which is not ideal. Um, but Duchess is is probably oh, likely to die yeah. to the next shot she takes. Um, I think this is Ollie rolling rolling dice to see what would have happened. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, and the answer is nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but but still the game here. So if Kylo kills Duchess quickly. Um, then I think the win condition from Ollie becomes to half fader and, and run away. Um, and whilst Kylo going toe to toe, sixth health into a four health Vader doesn't sound great in terms of killing Vader. It's not beyond the realms of possibility uh, that Ollie can put two damage on Vader here without going to half with on Kylo uh, and then run away for victory. Um, but his first step in that has to be to take Dodgers off the board. Yeah, I think this was also where the conversation between us came up about he at this point he was pretty sure that Kylo was more than my Vader, um, mm-hmm. in which case just killing Duchess was all that mattered. But then this is where the bid comes in because it's points destroyed, not points remaining. Yeah. Uh, at which point he realises he has to kill Duchess and half Vader, um, which are things that never enter my mind because my win objective is just to kill everything. Really simplify the game, don't you, Dale? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's much easier than doing maths. <laughs> Although okay, that is something, so, especially with half points and stuff, that's definitely something that's coming a lot more now with working out what you need to kill. Uh, I spent so long chasing more complicated lists and realising that that's totally the wrong thing to go after, even if it is either easier to kill or hurts me more. It's it's much more about working out what the right thing to kill is on mass as well now. There's a uh, YouTube channel I can suggest you watch, Dale. It'd be really good for you. <laughs> <laughs> am am, I, am I on it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't this episode um, one? <laughs> <laughs> so with an hour played, I think that Kylo has to kind of be aggressive. He doesn't have time really to kind of wheel out, uh, sort himself out and come back in. Um, so he doesn't really have time to play all his natural game of kind of jinking about and getting those good trades. He he needs to take Duchess off the table within the next turn or two. Um, and then can, you know, if there's enough turns left, can maybe be a bit more cautious about how he approaches Vader. Um, the one hard here looks decent. Um, Vader's obviously got his kind of K turns and Talon rolls, but it sort of swings the arc round towards Duchess. Um, 
Ali taking the the focus there. I think I think a reasonable choice. He's got got the lock on Vader, so he doesn't want to kind of lose that action that he got last turn. Uh, and also with with Vader's position actually, and and the combination of the K turns and afterburners, uh, he could well be taking fire here from Vader. And then I suspect here what we see is yeah some Duchess magic. So having played against Dale and uh, also Dom Flanagan who runs uh, Duchess a lot as well. I could see exactly what was going to happen with the the bank one turn, presumably barrel to safety. This, this came up. This conversation <laughs> came up in the game. I assume. Do you just take a focus now? I wanted to, but <laughs> <laughs> but this is very much like the danger of Duchess in an end game uh, piece. It's such a weird situation. You look at two i sixes and an i five, and the i five is so frequently the most frustrating end game piece because of her flexibility. Like there's very few other ships in the game that can do that level of repositioning. Yeah, I think if she's moving after you, then the fact that Vader and Sun are I six and she's I five is irrelevant. Um, and at which point, her pseudo advanced sensors uh, mean that yeah, she's nigh on uncatchable in the end game, and that's the the difficulty Ellie has here. And even though they were sort of range two, maybe even range three apart at the start, that was too close. You know, Ollie had narrowed his arc down too much, um, and Dale unlike him, did roll out of Predator. Um, <laughs> three, but who, who cares? But three hits in nevertheless, uh, and Kylo having to spend a force there to take no damage. And Vader turning away, and importantly now, has got the lock. Ollie's in a hard position here, isn't he? Because although I was explaining last turn how he just, just kills Duchess and then, and then turns around uh, and, and takes a couple of damage off Vader for the win, I think we've seen that example, the flexibility of Duchess, that that first task of killing Duchess is um, is going to be nowhere as easy as it sounds. Um, Vader here, I presume, again, talent rolling or cade turning, you know, it's going to be his quickest way to get back in, point himself back towards Kylo. Um, any clever ideas for Kylo here, Lloyd? No, I think at this point you're, you're running out of time and you just need to get lucky shots, right? So I think... Actually, I preferred the K-turn just because it keeps your, your arc wide and allows you to pursue Duchess, but I think the talent roll here potentially also looks quite good. Um, depends, again, on how aggressive Dale wants to be. If, if Duchess has done the crazy thing and one turn left again, the alien will, will just take you around very happily. I think the talent roll may jam Duchess up a bit. I think even with the alien on one hard, because of the position of that that rock, then I, I think her, her barrel rolls will be shut down by by Kylo and, and the rock. And if Kylo's lucky, he may just clip the back edge of Duchess. Um, yeah, I, did, I wasn't expecting the talent roll from him at this stage. I think the K-turn, however, would have been better and would have ensured you got a shot. Um, as it is, it uh, looks like he's in a, in a nice place. You take a very risky decision here, Dale. I've got to say, for someone who was saying that they're not used to Vassala a minute ago... Um, you, what were your kind of thoughts on, on actions here? You kind of like a bow rolled to miss the shot last turn, and I felt that was very out of character. <laughs> so, but in, in re, jokes aside, this now becomes a trade of damage into Kylo to yeah. give Vader the best chance of pushing him to half later in the game. Because now, yeah, least, if you get the wonder shot here and half right. Kylo, the game's yeah. over, right? But even yeah. if you just do two shields and lose Duchess, it still puts you in a good place, yeah. albeit yeah. bizarrely also closer to losing. Yeah. I think I think my issue with that barrel roll is not the barrel roll. I mean, if the barrel roll definitely fit, then yes, you know, evading and, and taking the range one shot anyway is, is bad and, and you want to trade fire. I think the bit I was impressed by is is having the confidence that that barrel roll would fit because staying still with no evade is a disaster. Yeah. Um, but as it does, the barrel roll fits and Vader talent rolling and boosting back in there for his three dice. So three dice obstructed here from Vader. And Vader, so consistent, kind of averaging two to three, rolls hit, hit, focus, and uh, and ends up with hit, hit, crit there. Uh, and Ollie rolling an evade and two focuses. So the initial reaction is to spend both uh, force uh, to take no damage there. Um, but actually rethinks and decides to take the two shields. And that seems kind of a bit of a desperate play. And I think it is a desperate play, but I think it's probably one I agree with in that like, Ollie needs to kill Duchess here. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't really get the benefit. Rolls three focus and a blank and has to spend both uh, force. 
um, and Dale with uh, natural away there actually Dutch is living on one so I think it's not worked out but I think I agree with the decision to not spend the force there on, on offense and and Ollie had to be hoping there that, that Duchess was going to be dead. So a couple of things. So I think I agree with the decision to take the damage because you have to, right? Because there's not much time left and you need to put damage in. Um, interesting, Dale, that you chose to not spend your force from Fifth Brother defensively and go down to one to have it for the return shot. Yeah, I'd, I'd already, I knew that I was going to live through that shot and that could have been the difference between three hits and four hits on the return back to once again a tokenless Kylo. So sure. that trade-off seemed worth it because now he's got to waste his time following me or divert it to Vader and spreading your fire is the easiest way to not do anything. Yeah, and I, I, I completely agree with that. I think at the point where you're not dying, you've got Kylo stressed, you know, not going to get a shot on Duchess next turn and not a lot of time left in the game. A two-health Duchess is... is you know, no better than a one health Duchess really in that situation, and having that that force could have made all the difference. As it was, you ended up with two hits because of the predator reroll, uh, and Kylo um, really not not trying very hard to win this game. Uh, blanks out uh, and takes another two damage. So, from a full health Kylo, Ollie is now a two health Kylo. Didn't kill Duchess, uh, and is in a bad situation. I think what we've seen here is something again we've talked about a lot, right? And it's the difference between always having mods. And quite, I mean, so obviously a lot of the ships here have force and things like that. But Dale's always been modding. And part of that is a lot of it is built in, but has also had tokens fairly often. Whereas it feels like Ollie in this game has had tokens very rarely. Like Thanison has never used an offensive mod. Von Reg died with no mods. And Kylo spent a lot of the time uh, talent rolling a K10. Now, part of that is because. Probably got perhaps slightly unlucky and would end up behind early on. But it's something we've seen a lot. Like it feels like Ollie has rolled a reasonable amount of paint, but focused results and not hits or evades. And yeah. just uh, as you as you're talking about Ollie rolling a reasonable amount of paint, Dale <laughs> using his mods uh, to get hit 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 crit, uh, and Ollie blanking out um, and and Kylo exploding in spectacular fashion. Um, for what? Turned out to be uh, a relatively comfortable in the end win for Dale there. Um, and I think the first thing to talk about is the difference in the list. That, that Dale has three ships, all of which are manoeuvrable, all of which work as an in-game ship. Um, and Thanison, although we liked that trick and it did result in, in Suntir dying, over the course of the game, Ollie didn't get enough out of Thanison. And you're absolutely right, Lloyd. There was, there was one shot that was modded uh, from Thanison, and that was the shot that was at range three through a gas cloud. Um, and then beyond that, it was just naked dice. Uh, and I think that was the tale of the game. It was it was more mods more often from Dale. You know, often passive mods, but but certainly um, showing the, the benefit there of the passive mods, allowing him to take those kind of intentional bumps, um, still have the modified shots, whereas Von Reg, the turn he had no tokens, died, uh, and, and Thanison just didn't do enough damage over the course of the game. Um, so, Dale... Um, Obviously happy with the result. Um, kind of takeaways from the game? Takeaways really is um, is definitely being fully aware of what the other list is doing and what it's designed to do. Um, because even though he didn't get many shots, Thanison did his job of making Suntir disappear. Uh, and trading Thanison for Suntir seems, seems a worthwhile thing in the points-wise anyway. But yeah, essentially it's how I'd go against any list with that with what I've played for so long is um is you just try and work your way through what you think the threat is and what the target of opportunity is every time, really. And Lloyd, from your point of view, obviously Dale, we spoke about it at the beginning, you know, flies in a much more instinctive way than we do. Um do you think that's something that, that you or I could kind of incorporate into our game? Do you think there's elements we can take? Or do you think it's just a you know, we play the game a different way? Um and, and Dale is a really good example of of how to do it for those more uh uh, intuitive players um if you don't have the ability to kind of see it that quickly you need to be more like us and kind of plod your way through and think more slowly about things yeah i think it's this game is an interesting uh, comparison right because i think ollie plays a similar style to us in that he is very sort of calculating and has a plan for everything uh whereas you say dale is a bit more uh i mean fly by the seat of your pants instinctive what phrase do you want i was going to go time. with the more polite uh, instinctive but yeah <laughs> But as I say, like this channel has always been about us getting players who are better than us on to talk about how they play X-Wing and what we can take from it. 
And I think this is a great example, right? Like you and I have talked at length about all the decisions we put into X-Wing, and I think all of those are valid and, and correct. But, uh, Paul, how many national championships do you have? Um, uh, none. None. Zero. I, I, I also have none. Dale, how many do you have? I have one. I have one. And I think that's probably my summary for this uh, this episode. Uh, you, you both joke, but really, having watched uh, all of them, but especially the most recent one, and looking at how you guys analyse it, both during and after, is a massively untapped resource that makes you look at games totally differently afterwards. I love watching games, either ones that I'm in or ones that I'm not, but they're both equally useful for seeing either things that you missed when you were in the moment. Looking at it from other people's eyes is, is I can't, I don't think I can overstate how much of a, a resource in itself it is seeing how other people looking at your games and uh, and seeing where you can and can't do better um uh, definitely for making taking your game up to the next level thank you and i think that's something we've, we've sort of spoken about on forums things where we've uh, posted these videos but i think it is regardless of how successful you've been at x-wing and you have been far more successful than paul and i combined sadly a bit um, i've been a bit <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but there is always something to take from it. And from every game, there is something to learn and something to take away and something to improve on, regardless of how well or badly that game has gone. And perhaps regardless, as you say, whether or not you were even involved in it, there is always something to learn from. It. Yeah, thank you very much for the kind words. Sam. And I think that's maybe a good place to round it up. So with that, I'll say thank you, Dale, for coming on. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks again to Lloyd for joining us. And we're actually going to have a two week break uh, between this and the next episode because uh, we've both got a busy weeks ahead of us. Um, but we'll join you again in two weeks for episode 11 of uh, Fetching in Six. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.